Good morning ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're well on this fine Sunday. Let us review the price action in the US credit markets as we always do at the beginning of our videos. Well, the two-year note had another weekly green bar. Very small but still green. The five-year note had an almost unchanged but also green bar while the tenure note had a completely unchanged bar it closed exactly where it opened another sign of huge uncertainty and finally, the 30-year had a very small, just a few ticks, negative bar. What does that tell you? That tells us that there is a continuation of the complete uncertainty and the parking of money in the short end. It is becoming quite obvious that the market is far too short for any continuation of trend right now. This inability of the markets to continue their trend tells us that most probably a risk-off phase is coming. Positioning, especially in the five-year notes, is extremely large. We are at net record shorts in the five-year note and that probably means that we need to revisit this area around the 0.382 retracement around 119.00 to clear out all the record shorts. That would be a minimal retracement it probably can go all the way up to 119.23 in something like an A, B, C pattern before we can continue the downward trend. We believe that the trend is certainly down in price and up in yield, but that the extreme positioning after the Trump victory has made the market um, so short that the uh, trend cannot continue in its present uh, state of market positioning. If we look at the yield in five-year notes, and believe me, it looks the same in twos and tens, we see that the market basically tried the upside, failed, came back to the Bollinger Bands, went back up to the uh, next set of higher Bollinger Bands and now it is stuck somewhere in the middle. Well, we think the likelihood is greater now that it breaks down towards the 0.382 retracement around 165 in yield than it is for an immediate move up that clears these highs at the 210 yield level simply because of the huge positioning. But that would be a significant risk-off move that's got to happen in the next two or three weeks. We need to find a uh, reason for it and also a confirmation from other markets that it is more likely to happen than not. In our opinion, the confirmation to the rally in the US is provided by the structure in the European bond markets. This is the bubble and it has behaved exactly as we suggested last week. It has broken down towards its targets around 132.66, 132.60. Uh, held it beautifully. The uh, moving average is still pointing upwards and the Bollinger Band is now contracting, which should mean that this area should hold next week and then we have a bounce back up to the breakdown point 
which is 133.21 to 133.25. So we have a confirmation that the market should head higher. And don't forget that the European markets last week were the uh, laggards or the even the leaders in terms of higher yield. While the US could not put in higher yields, the European markets did manage it. So this is a confirmation if we start seeing moves back up towards 133.21 that the US market will follow. The Bund is very much in the same position. We think that the Bund down move has exhausted itself and that we will now go and retest these levels around 163, 163.25 which should be good shorting levels again for the eventual move down which will break the previous lows below 160. But we do see the possibility of significant rallies next week in both the bond, the 10-year uh, note, the 5-year note, the bobble and the bund. So basically a worldwide risk-off move in the next uh, 5 to 10 trading days which then allows the market to continue in its primary trend, having cleared out the bulk of the short positions in all these contracts. Our view is further confirmed by the weekly yield charts of the Bobble and the Bund. We are coming very close to the uh, Bollinger Bands on the weeklies where it has never paid to be uh, pushing the market through the Bollinger Bands. So any drop next week towards, uh, uh, towards these Bollinger Bands should cause a reaction back down towards the middle of the Bollinger Bands around the minus 44 yield level. The same is actually evident in the Bund we should be able to get uh, reactions of the 50 basis points yield back down towards the 20 basis points yield. This is, this is going to be healthy, but you can see how the yield structure is finally changing. We are seeing uh, breaks of long-term downtrends in both the bobble and the bund. Going back to the bobble, we are seeing breaks of these very long-term trend lines which have lasted since 2013. This is, these are the 2013 highs and that is telling us actually that the risk reward in uh, the uh, bobble is beginning to change long-term that all these bounces uh, back down in yield towards, towards the minus 50 eventually will be aggressively bought and that the final move should be even into positive yield territory for the bubble and much higher yields for the Bund. For the Bund, it would not surprise us to see levels around the 1%, which are these highs created in early 2015. But these are very long-term moves uh, and we expect the first move to be back towards the middle of the Bollinger Bands before a reason comes out to uh, squeeze it all the way up to 1%. Our favourite, the BTP, is beginning to also show signs of exhaustion uh, around the 230 to 240 yield level. These levels have been rejected for almost two years now, so we would not be surprised that after um, a possible spike to around the 235 yield level, we see a significant retracement towards the 180 yield level before we go and test levels which are much higher up, which are around the 377 yield level. This would suggest that the uh, spread between the Bund and the, um, and the BTP 
could actually go much higher in the uh, this year around the 250 to 270 basis points uh, difference but that is a very long-term move the first move that we expect is back down towards the lows of uh, this week around below the 2% yield so we will be most probably taking off our uh, BTP Bund position, which has been uh, quite good to us, and looking to reinstate it when the where when the BTP hits the 180 to 190 yield level again. The next big question becomes: Are equities telling us that the risk-off move might be imminent? We keep on having huge divergences in the equities at these higher levels. They are tied up against the uh, daily, weekly and monthly Bollinger Bands. We see very, very little upside in the uh, S&P. 2310, uh, 20, uh, 2320, we think are going to be extremely good risk reward shorts or certainly levels because of uh, volatility being so low where buying put spreads is going to be uh, very uh, good from a long-term risk reward profile. We think that any break uh, down towards uh, through 2270 is going to be very significant and is going to cause a move all the way back down to the lows of the year around the 2235, 2240 level, uh, which was our previous level to get short. If we break 2270 on a closing level this week, we think we can say without much shadow of a doubt that the risk phase uh, has turned and it, that we are now in a risk off phase which should bottom somewhere around the 38 percent retracement around the 2200 level in the next few weeks of trading in the uh, s p so at these levels we are much better sellers than we are buyers and we think that at some stage over the course of next three four weeks as the bonds retrace and clear out all the shorts in the bond market uh, the same is going to happen re in reverse in the uh, s p's and then we're going to see a risk-off move which goes back down towards 2200 which will be another buy but uh, it will clear out all these very weak longs which have uh, initiated positions above the 2280 level. The chart structure in uh, NQ in the NASDAQ uh, 100 is much more favorable as we keep on saying week after week if you wish to belong or you have to belong NASDAQ is the contract to belong of. But conversely, now if we get a risk off phase, we see the possibility of the NASDAQ going all the way back to 5,000 or lower. Uh, 4,900 uh, 4, is our favored level. Uh, we think that that will probably be a very good level to buy it for another longer term run above 5,200 to possibly 5,500. But we certainly favor NASDAQ over the S&P as the structure is far more bullish than the S&P structure. Again, this contract is stretched and we think the likelihood of moves back down to 4,900 4, is quite high. In the European markets, equity markets, nothing has changed as we've been saying for many weeks 3325 is a very tough nut to crack for these markets we would much prefer to see a move back down towards the lower trend line on the weeklies around 30 uh, 3200 
to buy for the long term. Uh, the market just cannot crack 33.25. Holding longs anywhere near 33.25 is, in our opinion, silly. We'd much rather buy it above 33.25 than below it, or buy 3200 to 3150. We think at some stage this uh, moving average will most likely catch it, and that is just below 3200. But we think we still have several weeks of indecision in the European markets before we can uh, call the move higher towards the highs of 3800, which we think we will see this year. As we've been saying, we certainly think that this is the year when uh, the European bonds being short of those and being long of equities is going to pay very high rewards. Uh, we are looking for places uh, to put on a very long term, long equities in Europe, short bonds in Europe. Uh, and we think in, over the course of the next three to four weeks, we will get this, ret re this retracement back down towards 3200, which will be a long term buy against a short position in bonds and BTPs. A final market that we would like to get confirmation from is naturally the euro US dollar. Since we believe that the uh, US bond markets will rally over the course of the next couple of weeks in a risk off move uh, and that the European bond markets will rally also but far less than the uh, US markets because the positioning is far less extreme in the European markets, we would expect a move higher in the euro against the US dollar. It is quite likely from this chart structure that we can break this 108.27 level in the course of the next three or four weeks and rally towards 109 and catch this 200 day moving average. This is this would be what the market is not expecting. The market is hugely short of Euro USD and this kind of move is actually going to be very healthy in the long term for the new lows rather than expecting the market to move from here. Uh, we certainly think that the long term trend is down and con will continue to be down but we would much rather see the market cleared out of positions by having a strong rally up towards 110. This chart structure certainly allows for it uh, because in a few days this very weak crossover will actually disappear and will give us the possibility to move 2 or 3% higher in Euro USD. Having expressed our opinion, we need a trigger for this all to happen. And we think the potential trigger is going to be data released on Wednesday, February the 1st. We have PMIs in Europe and we also have PMIs in the States. We have noticed that the Economic Surprises Index which was so strong to the upside after the Trump election has actually turned and is showing much weaker economic surprises out of the US. If that is confirmed by weaker than expected PMIs on Wednesday and possibly stronger than expected PMIs in, the, in Europe, you will have the trigger for the moves that we've just told you might happen in the next couple of weeks i.e. a complete <coughs> move from risk on, full risk on, to position squaring in the bonds and equities and in the Euro USD. So here we are at our biases for next week. As we've told you, the trigger could well be the data, which we think is going to be key for the week and that is the PMIs that come out on Wednesday. Five-year note and 10-year note, we are turning bullish. We will be buyers of the five-year note around 117.16, 117.17, 117.18, 117.19, 117.20, 117.21, 117.22, 117.23, 117.24, 117.25, 117.26, 117.27, 117.28, 117.29, 117.30, 117.31, 117.32, 117.33
with a stop below 117.04. So a complete change to what we had before. We prefer longs in five-year notes over 10-year notes and closes below 117.04 are needed to reverse our opinion that we should be long to one that we should be short. Now TLT is an interesting one. We are neutral on it, but if we get closes above 122.70, that will give us a target of at least 126.70. Let's have a quick look at uh, that chart. We would not be surprised to see a break of this moving average, which has caught the price action since the highs in the next couple of weeks. That is approximately 122.50. Should that happen, and we anticipate it, we would look for a move to around 127.40, which we think would be a wonderful level to sell for the long term. So our TLT price action, we hope for a move through the 122.30.40 area, 122.75, back up to 127 where we will be uh, initiating long-term shorts again. Bunds, we are neutral uh, from bearish and now looking for a move back up towards 163 to resell. Bobble, we are hoping for a move up to 133.25.45 to sell again. The stop should be 133.65. We're certainly not sellers down here we think the 132.60 level is going to catch it for the squeeze back up to 133.25. Yes, uh, the S&Ps, uh, this is our preferred contract for shorts in equities. We see almost no sustainable upside and we are looking for uh, closes below 22.70 to go short for a move back down through 2240 towards 2200. The structure in NQ is still much better than the action in the uh, S&Ps. So we're looking for closes below 5100 and confirmed by ES below 2270 to confirm that the risk off phase has started. In the Russell, closes below 1346 uh, are key should that happen, we are going to be short of that market as well. European equities, uh, we prefer uh, on the, uh, for a long term to be long of those rather than the US, but uh, at this level around 33.25, we are neutral. We would love to see a move down to 3200 in the uh, stocks to buy it. And in the dollar, our current position uh, is turning bearish the dollar, looking to buy 106.50 in the euro uh, with a risk of no more than 1%, looking for uh, moves back up towards 108.50 to 109.50 to resell. All in all, we're looking for counter trend weeks uh, which could be triggered by the price action on uh, Wednesday and the data on Wednesday. These counter trend action could be violent and clear out all, sh all the shorts in fixed income and the euro and allow the trend to re-establish in March and April. So we think that February could be a real counter trend month before the trends re-establish later on in the year. This is all confirmed by the valuations, the fundamentals. Uh, we think that this will not stand. Uh, we are looking for moves back down towards 2200, these previous highs, and we think that the fundamental, fundamental valuations support that view. In terms of uh, the sectors, consumer discretionary is very close to topping out. Uh, staples could be in favour again uh, over discretionary. Energy is still a complete mess and we will not touch it. 
financials are very much up against the uh, trend lines and we can't see very much support to the S&Ps coming from those. Healthcare could have a uh, new uh, bull phase as the risk off uh, comes in. So we are not sellers of uh, XLV. We are better buyers of XLV over the course of the next few weeks. Industrials are the ones that we favor least and we certainly would not be long of them at these levels of valuation. And finally, as you can see, the one uh, sector which has the most mo uh, room to move to the upside is XLK, the technology index, even if it does retrace all the way back down towards levels around 800 is still a very good long-term buy. We think that this very powerful uptrend will re-establish itself and that eventually we will trade well over 900, possibly somewhere around 1000 towards the end of 2017. So that is all we have for you today. Happy trading, uh, good luck to you, and we will be tweeting away whatever we do next week. Thank you very much indeed.